tax plan itself has been all over the map. It's kind of hard to call it a plan. It hasn't been very uh, deeply disclosed, and when it's been disclosed, the, the numbers keep changing. He's gone to different top tax rates at different times. There's complete confusion about whether the carried interest 15 percent, would, would it apply to carried interest or not? So I want to start with the notion that the plan itself is really unclear. And then secondly, I want to say that Basically, when he gets up there and says, this is my plan today, this is today's variant of my plan, he basically says, don't worry about the fact that there, this could by itself really increase the deficit. Don't worry about the 4.4 to 5.9 trillion hole over 10 years that my tax cut creates. I give you that range because of the uncertainty. Don't worry because we're going to grow out of this. But actually, there are no serious economists any place who believe that. There are no numbers to support the fact that, you, that his tax cut will generate so much growth, which along with so much benefit from deregulation, again, not measured, that the tax cut costs nothing, that there's no deficit. And then when people point out, but yeah, there is a deficit that will increase, he says, well, we'll get rid of it through waste, fraud, and abuse. And then he has his penny plan, he said the waste, fraud, and abuse will just take pennies off of the budgets of all the government programs. If you add that up over 10 years, it's almost a 30% cut in non-defense discretionary spending. Do you know what that includes? Things like veterans' health benefits. So the plan doesn't add up. It doesn't so add you're, up. you're critical of the idea that he has changed his plan over time, among many other <laughs> criticisms that you would have, but, but that he's changed his plan. But, but couldn't you at the same time say it was responsible for him to change his plan because the first one was scored at a 10 or 11 trillion dollar ballooning of the deficit and he has brought that down uh, and and whether you you agree uh, that there is or is not growth that mm -hmm. occurs because of the fiscal stimulus you'd have to say that that changing the plan may have been a responsible thing to so do. I, but I think that at the core of the plan is, an, is irresponsibility because whether is it a was, fallacious argument. So whether it was a much larger cut or one half as much, whether it was 10 trillion or 30 trillion or now down to five. So say the estimate right now uh, is that there's somewhere between 4.4 and 5.9 trillion in lost revenue. Okay. And the, that range, that missing 1.5, comes through the fact that there's still a huge amount of uncertainty about this. what does his 15% rate apply to? Is it just to corporations? Is it to S-corps? Is it to private partnerships? What, what does it apply to? All right, so we got this hole. We have this hole. That is at the, the center of his plan is the notion that I will cut taxes. I will cut them in a way that disproportionately benefits the top. It will create a big deficit. We can debate the size of the deficit, but big. Everybody agrees with that. And then, but don't worry about it, because we're going to have all is, this wonderful supply. Is there economics. no growth that results from lower tax rates and cutting taxes, or does it just not get you back to $4 trillion By or the way, the, the, the evidence on cutting top rates, as he's doing, is that there's no growth effect. If you kind of look at the literature, does the supply-side economic Notion. What, about, what about the regulatory piece of cutting back regulation? So regulatory is a different set of a different argument. So all I want to say here is that what he's assuming is he, he creates a very big hole in the deficit. So therefore, he has to come up with very big numbers to fill the hole. His number on the benefit to the economy from deregulation is, not, is also not a credible number. He's talking about numbers that are like 2% of GDP. Yeah, I was going to okay. say 5% GDP it to get back to it percent doesn't, where we stand it, right it now. doesn't. Yeah. So and also, let's think about a key part of what he's proposing here, because I do think uh, this also should matter and does matter to voters. When you say where is the, the biggest set of deregulatory effects, it's basically he doesn't believe in climate change. He does not believe in climate change. He says it's a hoax. He says it's creation by our enemies. It's a, a hoax. Right. Therefore, a lot of what he is proposing is deregulation in the energy field. And frankly, I don't think either the U.S. or the world can step back from its commitments made in Paris, which was one of the great international agreements of all time, to begin to take serious multi-year steps on climate. So deregulation for me, uh, when you actually break it down, his numbers don't add up. They're, they're much too big numbers in terms of the effect of deregulation on growth. But second of all, look at where he's taking the deregulation. The, the hit is on energy.
Hey CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the I right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.